Hey, what's going on everybody? Jacob here, but you can call me Jake, and today we are doing a review of chapter 55 of Seraph of the End. Uh, I would say this is a pretty good chapter. Uh, I, I enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, the chapter starts out, uh, it's, um, Farid, and you know, from the last chapter, uh, Mahiru, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, Gurin's, like, you know, demon or whatever, his sister, I, I forget what it is, his sister or something, but his demon appears or whatever, and Farid senses it, and like, he and like looks to like the like hardcore to the left or whatever uh you know he's or not to the left but you know just looks in general and uh it starts out again this chapter and fair you know fair senses her and then the is it the progenitor i think it's the progenitor that's watching over them or the progenitor's guard uh he's like you know what are you looking at so he like he like jumps up there and grabs the fucking uh, pole or whatever he's on fire obviously <laughs> he puts him in the shade and, you know fair's like oh shade he's like what what's going on it's like, what are you looking at? I want to know. He's like, I wasn't looking at nothing. And then he looks again, you know, because my hero's right there. He's like, you know, the progenitor's like, I have a weird, you know, I have a weird feeling. There, there was again. He's like, is there something there that I can't see? So he fucking uses his sword and, you know, cuts, like, whatever's there just, you know, at his bad feeling. And it fucking, like, like all the concrete or like whatever they're standing on, the dock, it cut that open and then, like, the fucking just ocean wave just, like, crazy, like, straight up cut. So he's... He's pretty fucking powerful, as you can, as we can tell from that. But um, he's like, oh, I don't feel it anymore. Did it go away? And he, he hears a car from like way across the fucking ocean or whatever, or, in, or you know, wherever they're at. And he's like, should I, should I go investigate the car? Or do I need to? St I still gotta stand guard, and, you know, guard these two fucks. He's like, oh, I don't know. And then we cut scenes to uh, you, uh, you, Mika, the gang, and then Crowley, and they're all in, you know, the uh, that little mansion they're staying at. And, uh, you know, they're all eating because they haven't eaten any, like, that type of, like, actual food in a long time. So they're all eating, and Crowley, like, goes into, like, this room where there's a note there for Crowley left by Farid. And, you know, it's like, um, don't, you know, don't let the vampires, you know, find you or whatever. Let the humans, uh, it said something like that. And then it's like, there's vampire traps around just in case uh, you get caught by the vampires. And he's like, vampire traps, what is it, you know, testing it out. And then, like, it goes to open it, and it goes clunk, and he's like, clunk? And then it goes to the, it cuts outside, and, he, and like, he's like, what was that? You know, I heard something, and then fucking Crowley walks out, he's all covered in bullshit. And it's like, uh, what happened? He's like, oh, nothing, just a jerk. That's, then, you know, that's, so I guess Crowley left a, or Fair left a fucking bomb for Crowley or whatever, and I think that was pretty funny. And then right after, uh, they want to go down, to, uh, Crowley wants to go down to the cellar uh, to get, you know, everybody to, he's trying to he, i don't know if he's trying to get you to freak out he doesn't want you to go berserk you know because you has that demon mode but uh he doesn't want him to go to berserk but uh he does need everybody to go down there for ferret's plan or whatever to freak them out or because he's got all the family like all of you's family that he had like they're all in the um the little i guess cryogenesis not cryogenesis but like the little tanks or whatever and like all the people that ferret's killed or whatnot and uh they go down there or they don't go down there yet like uh they're like you. You should stay up here because if you go berserk, you might kill everybody. And you know, you know, my family's down there too. You know, uh, one of the one of the guys in his group. I forgot what his name was. Um, you know, I don't want you killing my family too. They're down there too. And it's like, no, nah, I won't go berserk. I won't go berserk. Uh, he like grabs the head from his his like the head that got decapitated from his family. And he's like, I will save you. I'll bring you back. And Mika's like, that's not possible for humans, dude. It's like, it's like not gonna happen. He's like, whatever, I won't go berserk. So they go down there and they have all the uh, all the tanks and whatnot and they see him and it's like, my family, you starts crying immediately and Mika can't cry anymore because he's a vampire and he's like, you know, he's he's losing all of his human feelings, which is kind of sad because that that's his family and he can't even feel the emotions that he would feel if he was human. So it's kind of sad to see. Uh, and then uh, Crowley sees somebody that he knows and... Um, What's her face walks up to him he's like is that someone you know and he's like uh yeah you could say that uh he said you want to bring her back to life too and it's like no nah, i can't you know I, I i don't feel that way anymore uh that's why we're so that's that's why vampires are so able to use the terror for the end project because they have no feelings or whatever uh he shows what's her face the the book it's like the demon the de uh crest of the demon army on it it's like a, a huge codex of like uh i guess the research materials and whatnot of uh, you know, all the bullshit, and it's like we can't decode this. And uh, Crowley's like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna have one of your old friends come back." And he's like, "Old, fr you know." She's like, "Old friends, but we don't have any." And then, then it cuts to uh, uh, Gurren and his company pulling up to the house. And like, what the hell is that? And Gurren's like, "Can't you tell? It's a haunted house." And that, <laughs> that's the end of the chapter. So uh, 
all in all, I think it was a good chapter. I like I like where it's going. I like the the badassery of Ferret. Even though he's a fucking like on fire, he can still like be menacing as shit. Uh, I want to know what the hell's going on with um, Mahiru. Like, what, what is her? What is like? Why is she coming back now? What the hell's Gurren gonna do? Is Gurren gonna go crazy again? You know, um, things are looking good. Things are looking good. I think uh, you is uh, he's you know his ego is getting to him. Like he you know, he thinks he's some big badass that can take over anything. And I feel like it's gonna get him in trouble here pretty soon. Like he he's like he was talking about like uh, he'll sacrifice the whole world for his family or whatever. You know, it's all about him him him. Like I'll do everything for you guys. You know, it all it only matters about me and my family. And it's like. His ego is going to get the best of him one of these times, and he's going to get his ass fucking whooped. And um, another, I think an interesting thing could be, like, the, the old friend. I think that old friend probably will most likely be Gurren because, you know, why the fuck would he just appear uh, at the haunted house? You know, I'm pretty sure Mahiru is probably leading him there. Uh, I guess he's going to help them with the, the, you know, the codex or whatever. So, I don't know. It would be cool to see them all working together again I or... Or if, or if not, if Gurren's just in it for himself, or, you know, Gurren's trying to do something, some Seraph of the End bullshit again, I don't know. Uh, we will see, we will see. Um, but if you liked anything I had to say, uh, leave a like, and if you have any um, any uh, thoughts on the chapter yourself, or what's going to happen in the future, leave a comment below, and consider subscribing for more content, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Later!